Today, 20th of September, NVIDIA finally made an announcement regarding the next series of RTX graphics cards, the 4000 series. Whilst this was no surprise and somewhat anticipated, what was surprising was the direct reference to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in this short video, that's what we're going to focus on. But there was more, and it was significant. NVIDIA have announced the imminent introduction of DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling version 3. DLSS 3 brings with it the promise of significantly increased performance. And in conjunction with the 4000 series cards, that increased performance can be up to 100% or more. For flight simmers and VR enthusiasts alike, this could be the breakthrough in performance we've been waiting for. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. The Series 4000 graphics cards are based on a new architecture called the Ada Lovelace, featuring a mind blowing 76 billion transistors and capable of accommodating up to 18,000 CUDA cores, which is about 70% over the previous Ampere generation. And all three processors get an upgrade. The new cards get a brand new streaming multiprocessor capable of up to 90 teraflops. The RT cores or ray tracing get a major update, effectively doubling performance. And last but not least, a brand new Tensor Core. It's their fourth gen, and it's the most powerful we've ever seen so far. The new shader processor now uses shader execution reordering, and it's able to do this on the fly. What that means to you and I is it's able to utilize the GPU resources far more efficiently and according to NVIDIA will offer a significant ray tracing improvement but also up to 25% in game performance and FPS. Turning now to DLSS. I've already covered how DLSS works in a previous video. I'll leave a link in the notes below. And processing of DLSS is done via the tensor cores. In essence, it would render a low resolution image and then upscale it based on the previous high resolution frame. And this is computed pixel by pixel. The big change that DLSS 3 brings using the new tensor cores and a number of new processes is it no longer needs to process pixel by pixel which includes thousands upon thousands of different computations. Now it's going to be able to do it frame by frame. This will make a significant difference to the graphics pipeline and benefit both GPU and CPU. And those CPU benefits come all the more to bear if you're dealing with a big world game. And with Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, you don't get a much bigger world than that. According to the NVIDIA statement, this new technology allows for frames per second above what normally the CPU would be capable of achieving. They consider this a significant breakthrough in technology. Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, used Microsoft Flight Simulator as one of the examples of the improvement in performance that can be expected with the Series 4000 graphics cards. Due to copyright restrictions, I've changed the music on the following segment. A few comments are important to mention at this stage. One, I haven't tested this, I can only report at this stage what NVIDIA are saying. Secondly, on Microsoft Flight Simulator, note the comparison was to DLSS Off and the new DLSS 3. There was no direct comparison between DLSS 2 and DLSS 3. Perhaps that was because Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't officially support DLSS 
until SIM Update 10 becomes a stable release. One other point mentioning is they said they've been able to push the new architecture to over 3 GHz. That's a first. The comparisons being made seem to be between the 3090 Ti and the 4090. Jensen then went on to announce details on the 4090 coming out 12th of October, followed by the 4080 in November. No further details were given, but he did boast that Microsoft Flight Simulator would be twice as fast on a 4090. Let's hear what Jensen had to say directly. Today we're announcing our highly anticipated NVIDIA Ada Lovelace GPU, the GeForce RTX 4090. NVIDIA engineers push technologies on every front. New SM with shader execution reordering. New RT core with opacity micromap and micro mesh engines. New tensor core with FP8 transformer engine. And a pixel processing 300 tops optical flow accelerator for DLSS3. Overall, four times more processing throughput. Compared to the world's reigning GPU champion, the 3090 Ti, 4090 is two times faster on Microsoft Flight Simulator, three times faster on Portal RTX, and four times faster on RacerX. The GeForce RTX 4090, the new heavyweight champ, is $15.99. Available October 12th. The GeForce RTX 4080 comes in 16 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte versions. 4080 is three times the performance of 3080 Ti on Racer X. 4080 starts at $899. The best gaming platform in the world just got better. Our 30 series, starting at 329, are the best GPUs in the world serving mainstream gamers. RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 GPUs, starting at 899, deliver the ultimate performance to enthusiasts. The Ada Lovelace generation advances all three RTX processors, the engines of neural rendering. Ada is a quantum leap for gamers. Well, it looks like the rumors were spot on. NVIDIA are going to start off by releasing the 4090 and then phase in the 4080 in November. No details on the 4070 were given, and it's clear the 3000 series is going to be around for a while to cater for the lower end. And this is probably indicative of this current stock holding and the ongoing need to diminish stocks, both at NVIDIA and with resellers. What do you think will happen to the 3000 series cards price points? 3090 will disappear, but the 3080 etc. will be around for some time. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Stay well. Look after yourselves, I'll see you again soon, and bye for now.